My name is Anna Bassi. Our paper in the March 2018 issue of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology is a study using the Tyneside Pegboard Test. This time test was developed at Newcastle so that we could study unimanual and bimanual hand function across the age span and in those with impaired hand function. Paradoxically, timed tests of hand function are often technically challenging for people with impaired hand function, yet these are the people in whom it is most useful to measure it, so that we can see how effective our interventions have been. To make the test accessible for those with impaired hand function, we incorporated some specific design features. Firstly, the pegs are placed upright and with plenty of space between them on the boards to facilitate grasp. Secondly, there are three sizes of pegs and we undertake the test starting with the large pegs to make the grasp easier. So when we finished with these large pegs, so this is the large peg here, then we would proceed to use um, the medium sized peg, so that's the medium sized peg, and then to go on to the small pegs. And then also to improve accuracy of timing, um, we have got a system which electronically records the um, peg removal and replacement times, so there's no need to use a stopwatch. Also we've got a software interface to facilitate the recording of participant data. During the assessment, the participant sits at a table with the pegboards comfortably in reach and in the midline. Prior to undertaking the test, the participant views a demonstration of the task and has a practice run. For the unimanual task, participants are instructed to pick up and transfer all of the pegs from one board to the other board using one hand only as quickly and accurately as possible and the test starts with the dominant hand. The test is repeated, moving the pegs with the same hand but in the opposite direction. And then this sequence is repeated using the non-dominant hand. If the participant completes the large peg test, we then proceed to repeat this sequence using the medium pegs. This requires switching from the large peg overlay to the medium peg overlay, which is very straightforwardly done like that. And then the um, medium pegs will fit in like that. Again, if the medium peg test sequence is completed, we proceed to the small pegs by changing the overlay in a similar manner. Finally, we proceed to the bimanual task. For this, we use the large pegs and a central divider. So, this is the divider with a central hole, and it's just placed in the board like that. And then um, the participant is asked to transfer all the pegs. So you pick up the peg with one hand, pass it through the central hole to the other hand, which then place it on the boards. And then you repeat with all the other pegs, and then you repeat the whole task, moving the pegs in the opposite direction. Again, there's a demonstration and a practice run undertaken before the times task. We have normative data available for the task across the age span from four years to 80 years. So what's new in our article? Well, by using this test, we could demonstrate that children with unilateral cerebral palsy show disproportionate difficulties with bimanual hand function, even allowing for their unimanual hand function. Data from the Timeside Pegboard Test can facilitate the targeting and monitoring of hand function in relation to therapy in conditions such as stroke and unilateral cerebral palsy. Thank you for listening.